When it comes to improving our personal finances, a great deal of emphasis is placed on issues like eliminating debt, saving our retirement, and choosing the right investments. But what about getting a promotion? The phrase dress for success has become a cliche over the years, but Professor Robert Wood says reevaluating your wardrobe might get you ahead in your job. And so nice to see you. Happy New Year. And Happy New Year to you, Mia, and all of you guys. All right, so let's talk of uh, fashion. Does it really matter? Can it really mean the difference between staying in your job and moving up? It can. And I'm always amazed at how many people do not realize that how you dress, dressing for a success, how that has hampered your chance of uh, pay hikes and job promotions. Well, does that mean, okay, so it's a new year, um, but we want to be careful. We just heard that story from Robin in Washington mm. about that $5,000 Brooks Brothers uh, clothing shopping spree. Yeah. We can't do that. So does it have to cost a lot of money to upgrade? You know, there's a rule that we can follow. You actually should sort of like time capsule your wardrobe so that you, you spend twice as much for twice as little. Ooh, I like that. So you pay more money for quality clothes. You don't have as much, but the idea that you're matching these things as they go along. Because one of the things we often forget that if you cannot remember what you wore to the last event or the last <laughs> office meeting or whatever, chances are your viewers didn't either. They don't remember. So we can relieve ourselves of that thought. So how do I kind of identify an office style? Again, we speak of that culture. Okay. Now, if you've been in the company long enough, one of the uh, warning signs you should be looking for the whole time you're working is what is this office's culture? And what is the culture of those clients who come to visit us? Because the two will mesh. And your, your managers, your upper people in the, in the office, follow them. They okay. are the leaders and they know what that protocol will be. All right, now I have a question from Darwin Sperling from Chicago. Oh. I don't have a lot of money, so what are the most important things I should do to my wardrobe as a man? You don't necessarily always have to have a suit, depending on what type of work you're in. Uh, nice sports jackets and that blazer for a man is essential. A pair of gray dark slacks, even khakis, but you really need the button-up shirts. Button-up shirts are always going to say professionalism, and they're accepted by most in the office. You don't need to buy those expensive silk ties. You can get the knit ties and the ties that are a little bit more on the fun side. Shirts could be printed. They could be plaids and gingham. You can have those kind of things for you. You do not have to go with that corporate 100% uh, toe-to-top suit all the time. No. Now, I saw somebody uh, not too long ago wearing one of those gold chains. It just seemed very 80s-ish. Do, <laughs> do you want to be trying it? No, try you don't. Uh, okay. I mean, this is when you're going out. Most people won't have that. Some people have the tight bar clip, and, you know, they have all of this jewelry. The jewelry for a man should basically be his rings and his watch. Okay. That's it. Okay, lo so let's turn our attention to the ladies. Now. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, what should now? I, I always, uh, my, my mom always said, always have a, a perfect black dress. That's essential. That's essential. And we've spoken about the black dress a number of times. And while we're getting the black dress, we want to stipulate that you just don't need one black dress. Get several with different necklines. It's going to help you a lot with different sleeves, the cap sleeves and things of puff sleeves. And, and that'll always work for you. But ladies, when it comes to promotions, uh, you really have to be careful about how much you're exposing with your clothes. Uh, no short skirts, uh, watch the necklines of things, and I think that's what we're talking too much jewelry, office day makeup, all of those things are essential. So have you, in your, in your career, have you seen people not get promoted because of the way they dress? I hired a lot of people, and I didn't promote them because of the way they were dressed. Uh, the first thing I look for is their shoes. If yeah, you've said that before. You're, you're shoes, a shoe guy. I'm a shoe guy. Most people are. <laughs> because uh, understand that when we see you, four seconds, if I want to hire you for a job, four seconds, I'm going to take you in. Okay, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to clear yourself. Now, 30 seconds is going to be your posture and how you're talking. So we're not just talking wardrobe here. We're talking also your, your physical attributes as well. So all of those things go into polish because if I want to promote you for the job, I'm thinking in terms of how my clients are going to react when they meet you. Okay. And if I feel uncomfortable with you not being dressed well and things and may hurt the company's image. And so you think like that. 
I immediately sat up as soon as you started talking okay. about posture. It's so important. It's so important. Well, tell me what other tips you have for 2013, and uh, that'll be our last question. Okay, 2013, I think what we want to understand is that with the job market getting a lot better, this may be your chance to really just dress up and push for that job promotion and that increase in pay. So what does it take? It takes a little bit of your getting outside the box, willing to try something new, watch what corporate America is wearing, and you follow suit. All right. I like all those tips. Robert Woods, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's always such a pleasure to see you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you.